All right, so let's get started on that learning goal. Um, we have a problem here to look at, a winning formula. It says, suppose that the circumference of a circle is approximately 157 centimeters. Describe a strategy you can use to solve for the area of the circle. I'm gonna write down a couple formulas and I'll stop talking so that you can think about this. So there's a couple of formulas for you. What I want you to do is talk for about 30 seconds with your partner. And the question that I'm asking you to figure out together is, if you know the circumference of a circle, how could you find its area? All right, I'm sure you're having some great conversations. If you need a hint, what I want you to pay attention to is the things that these formulas have in common. We know that they all have pi. Two of the formulas have another thing that they have in common. They share something else as well. They have a variable in common. Do you see it? There's two ways to represent circumference. One is two pi r and the other is pi d. We want to use 2 pi r, and the reason is because the area formula for a circle also refers to the radius. That's something that these two formulas have in common. So they both have a pi, which is just a constant number, 3.14 is our approximation, and they both have the variable r, which represents the radius. That means because they both have that r, if we know the circumference, we can use the radius to figure out the area as well. Let's look at how that would work. What we want to do is just go back to substitution, which we do a lot of with geometry. And here's what I mean. Let's write down our formula for circumference that we're going to use. Now, instead of writing C, write 157. And instead of writing pi, write 3.14. There we go. Could we find out the radius if we know this much information? Yes, we could, because we can solve one-step equations. Here's one way to make this equation look even simpler. Multiply 3.14 times 2. When you multiply 3.14 times 2, you get 6.28. In other words, 157 equals 6.28 times r. Can we find r? Yes. We just need to divide both sides by 628, 6.28, in order to isolate that variable. A one-step equation just like y'all did in sixth grade. So let's do it. I'm going to write my equation again down here, just because I need a little more room. And let me write down what I'm doing. I'm dividing the left side by 6.28, and I'm dividing the right side by 6.28. The reason I'm doing that is because division is the inverse operation of multiplication. Dividing by 6.28 is the opposite of multiplying by 6.28. That is how I am going to get this r alone and find the value of my radius. So what do I need to do when I divide by 6.28? Well, I need to do the math. I need to divide 157 divided by 6.28. All right, decimal division, here we come. So first things first, let's multiply both the divisor and the dividend by 100 in order to move our decimal two spots over. Boop, 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 just like that. Two little boops on the inside and the outside. Um, and why are we allowed to do that? Because all we're really doing is multiplying both the divisor and the dividend by the same value, 100. We're not changing our quotient. We're just making our decimal scoot over two spots to the right. And that gives us an easier division problem to work with. Now what we have is one, 
um, 15,700 divided by 628. Now we don't really have to think about decimals as much. These are still pretty big numbers though, and now we realize that what we're really working with here is long division. When they're doing a lo long division, a lot of my students find it helpful to have a table of multiples. So one times 628 is 628. 2 times 628 is 1,256. 3 times 628 is 1,884. This is just a helpful school for doing long division. The reason is, right now I want to know how many times does 628 go into 1,570? It's going to go in twice, and that will be 1,256. So let me write that down. Then we'll subtract. There we go. So I have 314 there. I'm gonna bring down my zero and how many times does 628 go into 3140? It goes in five times. So five times 628 is 3140 with um, a remainder of zero, it goes in evenly. So what does this mean? This means that my radius is 25 centimeters. So let's write that down. The radius is 25 centimeters. Now remember, what's our goal here? Our goal is to find the area of the circle, and that's what we're asked to do here on number two. So just to review, what we did so far is we substituted the circumference into our circumference formula. We substituted 157 in place of C, we used 3.14 for pi, and we found that our radius was 25. Now that we know that, we can use our area formula to find the area of the circle. So let's do that. Our area is going to be, multiple, is going to be equal to 3.14, or pi, times the radius squared. So that's what we need to multiply together now. I'm going to multiply first 25 times 25. 25 times 25 is 625. So my area will be equal to 314 multiplied by 625. Let's do that next. All right, I've done the hard part. Let me put my decimal in the right spot. I have two digits behind the decimal in my factors. So I need two digits behind the decimal in my product. That means that my area of my circle is 1,962.5 square centimeters. Okay, you just watched me do a lot of math, a lot of multiplying, a lot of dividing. What I want you to talk about with your partner, I'm gonna pa I want you to pause the video, um, is what did we do? How did we take the circumference of a circle and use that to find the area? All right, talk with your partner. So here is the question you're answering. And there's a lot of right ways to talk about the answer to this question, but I would basically break it down into two steps. First, you want to use this circumference formula to find the radius. And it's not hard because you know the circumference and you know pi is 3.14. So all you have to do is substitute those values in place to find the radius. The next step, once you know the radius, is to substitute the value of the radius into the area formula, the formula that says area equals pi times the radius squared. And then evaluate that, figure out what is the value of the area. So it's basically a two-step process. You may have figured it out or described that a little bit differently, but we're all basically using the same process to find the area when we're given the circumference.
So we've done some challenging work together and I've done a lot of modeling. Now I want you and your partner to work together. What you're going to do is work on this problem. Um, you're going to draw a diagram. You're going to read through it together and find a solution. And then in a couple of minutes, we're going to take some time together to talk about composite figures.